Okay, so next we're on to the final section of the listening test, section four,、um, which is always、um, usually some type of lecture by someone.、Um, and so here we've got like some multiple choice to start off with, and then we're filling in the gaps on this sort of like note taking sheet here.、Um, so when we look at the multiple choice section, which will come first,、um, so we're looking for the talk will include information on, and then so we've got to be listening for the topic, the main topic of the talk. Um, so that's probably going to come right at the start. So you want to make sure that you're ready to sort of answer that, to be listening for that straight away. Then we've got our keywords: Egyptians and Romans. What did they use bees for? So we know when he mentions that, that's part of our key terms that we're listening for.、Um, and then they give a couple of lists of things. So they mention cosmetics in all of them. Cosmetics. Are they going to talk about weapons or medicine? Kind of is sort of like the difference between them. Um. Then the last one in the 19th century. So again, we're listening for the 19th century. What could be a good paraphrase of that? They might talk about the 1800s because that's the years, the century. The 19th century is the year 1800 to 1899.、Um, so we want to be listening for that as a key phrase. And then Americans started using bees for honey, pollinating crops, or in different locations or in one place. Okay. So my first thought when I'm, this is just a general test taking thing. I'm like, well, there's two very similar ones here: pollinating crops in different locations or crops in one place. So my feeling is that it's going to be one of those answers because why would they say bees for honey? Then why would they make up two very similar answers? But that's just test taking. <laughs> that's just my test taking personality coming out. So let's take a listen and see what the answers are. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to my lecture. Today I'm going to be talking about bees and beekeeping. I'll start by giving you a few historical facts, then go on to speak about the various species of bees and why they are so beneficial, and finally, I'll end by giving some advice to those of you who may be thinking of taking up beekeeping yourselves. So to start with. Did you know that bees were used way back in Egyptian and Roman times? Both the Egyptians and the Romans took advantage of bees for sweeteners and for medicinal purposes, and the beeswax was used for cosmetics and embalming. What's really interesting, though, is that the Romans used it as a type of weapon with poisonous honey catapults. The Americans started using bees to pollinate plants and crops by moving them around in the 19th century. So why are bees so vital? The medicinal properties of propolis, the sticky substance produced by bees, which is a mixture of saliva. Okay, so we're just going to pause there and take a look at the first couple of answers. Um, so we heard him listing out the things that he's going to talk about. So the first thing he said was he talked about.、Um, I'll start by giving you a few historical facts. So I'm like, okay, the history, the past, and history.、Um, but the history and end of beekeeping. But he didn't mention beekeeping. He just said give you some historical facts. So I was like, okay, it's going to be B or C because it's just the past or history.、Um, he says, then go on to speak about the various species of bees and why they're so beneficial. So I was like, okay, beneficial benefits. Maybe the answer is C. And finally, I'll end by giving some guidance. Okay. So, but what he doesn't mention is he doesn't say advice on taking a beekeeping course. He doesn't mention a course or academics. He just says gives advice about people who are thinking about taking up beekeeping. Okay, so it, the answer is B here because he doesn't specifically mention some kind of course or class or academic thing. Okay, so that's why we know that、um, he's going to talk about that the past and types of bees. Okay, then we go on to question two. He talks about the Egyptians and Romans. He talks first off. He says like making things sweet. Um, and for medicinal purposes, so A is the only one that mentions medicine. Okay, so they've tried to catch you up by saying medicinal purposes. They've turned it into an adjective by trying to—they're trying to trick you.、Um, but you know, this is the only one that says medicine. So I was pretty confident it was going to be A. But then we listen to what else they mention,、um, and they say the beeswax we use for makeup products, which is again a paraphrase of cosmetics. Cosmetics, makeup, paraphrase. Um, and embalming. Okay, so I'm like, okay, well, A mentions being a sweetener, it mentions medicine, it mentions cosmetics, and it mentions embalming. Okay, so that's how I I knew the answer was A.、Um, they do. He does talk about weapons and using sort of poison beeswax,、um, but for weapons. But I was like, well, this these ones don't mention medicine, which is a key thing that he mentions at the start. So that's how I know the answer is A here. And then for question thirty three. 
Um, he mentioned America. He mentioned the 19th century, and the key phrase he used was they started using bees to pollinate plants. So pollinating crops, pollinate plants again—a paraphrase, similar words—by um, moving them around in the 1800s. So moving around different locations. Okay, so that's how we know it wasn't C. Okay, so I was right. It was going to be B or B or C. <laughs> A、um, fifty-fifty shot. If you, if you were panicking in your real test, you got a fifty-fifty shot at picking the right answer, and then moving them into different locations、um, or taking them to different places. Okay, so that's how we knew it was B. So now we're going to move on to filling in the key information.、Um, so again, this is going to be careful listening. So if we take a quick scan through, propolis is medicinal purposes. A sticky substance made from something. This is probably going to be a noun here in thirty-four. Made from something. Made from. Beeswax made from honey, maybe because we're talking about bees. It can combat bacteria, something and viruses. This is going to be something that's sort of like medicinal. So maybe it can combat bacteria, germs and viruses, bacteria, illnesses and viruses. So you've got to know it's going to be a medicine word here. More than a third of something worldwide fruit and farm animal feed need pollination. More than a third of this is probably only something plant-based, right? Cereals, plants worldwide. Farmers worldwide, something like that.、Um, species: honeybee. Da 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 da. Three types: workers, females, female drones. Who? Something with queen bee. Who? This is going to be some kind of verb. I'm guessing is going to go here. Some kind of action. Who communicate, take care, who mate with queen bee? Something like that. Bumblebees do not. And again, this is going to be some kind of action. Do not do something. Do not. Sting. Do not dance. Don't like speak English. Whatever it is, it's going to go here.、We、go down to thirty-nine. We've got the advice section. Think of nearby crops and quantity of honey needed. Best something Langstroth. This is a strange word here. Langstroth. I'm guessing this is the name maybe of a researcher. So my guess would be that this is going to be some kind of book that he's recommending. Maybe like best beekeeping by so and so Langstroth. So that's what I'm thinking is going to go here. And then plant flowers and herbs. Avoid. Doing something here, okay. So I'm not quite sure. This is quite an open one that could go down here, okay. So let's listen and see what they say. Them around in the 19th century. So why are bees so vital? The medicinal properties of propolis, the sticky substance produced by bees, which is a mixture of saliva, beeswax, and a substance collected from tree buds in order for the bees to fill crevices in their hives. And fix honeycombs is well known even today, although studies on it are not conclusive. Having said that, propolis does appear to have anti-inflammatory properties, and can be used to fight against bacteria, fungi, and viruses. It can also be used in face creams and cosmetic ointments. Not only that, but over a third of the world's most important crops. And much of the fruit and vegetables we consume, as well as food for farm animals, are dependent on bee pollination. What is more, bee pollination provides significant economic value, providing hundreds of millions of pounds to the UK economy alone. Moving on to speak about the various species of bees, it is commonly believed that there are over twenty thousand species worldwide. Including honeybees, bumblebees, and solitary bees, in the UK alone, there are over 250 types. Probably the most common type of bee is the honeybee. Honeybees are likely to give you a good profit, as they can produce copious amounts of honey, some beeswax, as well as, of course, pollinating plants. Honeybees can be divided into three types: the workers. Who are female, the drones who are male, and whose job it is to mate with the third type, the queen bee. The queen bee can also start a new colony on her own, taking some of the existing colony members with her. As for the workers, they have various tasks and are incredibly strong, being capable of carrying over half of their own body weight in pollen, which they store in so-called corbiculi. On their back legs, bumblebees, unlike honeybees, do not hibernate, and can fly and pollinate in low temperatures and in cloudy weather and windy conditions. 
They are also able to adapt more easily to changes in the location of the hive. For this reason, they may be useful for those of you who need move the hives for pollination purposes. Solitary bees lay their eggs in holes, as opposed to hives, and do not produce much honey. They are, however, useful pollinators. Interestingly, they do not have a queen bee because each female is fertile. So, if you are thinking about taking up beekeeping, here are some things to bear in mind. What species of bee you decide to choose depends on what you want them for. You also need to consider what crops are nearby and or how much honey you require. You will also need to decide on the type of hive you want, depending on the species you have chosen. You can find a selection online, and some can be built yourself. The most cost-efficient is thought to be the Langstroth hive. As with this type of hive, bees can spend more energy on producing honey rather than wax and, as we all know, honey is far more valuable than wax. And finally, if after this talk you just want to be more bee-friendly, remember to plant some bee-friendly flowers and herbs in your garden or your window ledge, don't use pesticides, and in hot, dry weather, leave a small dish of water out for the bees to drink. I hope you found... Okay, so those were the answers as we went through from 34 to 40. Um, some of them were simple, some of them were a little bit more tricky. Um, I think one of the trickier ones was when they talk about female drones who something with queen bee. Because um, they gave you a couple of facts about the drones, but the key word here was that um, they say honeybees can be divided into three types. The workers, who are female, the drones, who, because you, you want to trick you to think who are male is what they, they're trying to trick you into writing here. But you have to listen to the whole sentence, who are male and whose job is to mate with the queen bee. So that's why you've got to look at the whole sentence, because it wouldn't make sense to say who are male with queen bee. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. So who mate with queen bee. So you've got to make sure your answer agrees with the words on either side of it. Okay, it makes a complete sentence. So that's what they were trying to trick you with, with 37. Um, and then at the, this one, number 39, um, they were, he was sort of talking a lot about hives in general, but he didn't make it very easy for you to pick out that he wanted you to say hive for 39. So the key again is what we picked out is Langstroth. So the idea that this was like a book. Um, the most cost efficient, oh no, not a book, I mean like a type of hive. Um, the most efficient, cost efficient is thought to be the Langstroth hive. So then we think the best hive is the Langstroth type. Okay, so hive, H-I-V-E. So again, this is spelling. And then the, probably the most difficult word to spell, probably pesticides at the end, is that avoid here. And of course, he paraphrased that to don't use. Okay, so again, you've got to be careful of your paraphrasing. All right, so that was the four sections of the listening test. And I hope that was helpful going through um, how we pick out some of the answers and that, that helps you follow along and you can see when I put in the answers, you know, the parts of the text that you should be listening to.